My name is Martin. Martin. I'm 84 years old. Martin. People think I'm crazy when I tell them how old I am. I'd like to be normal. I just have a sickness. The only way I can survive is by drinking blood. It's not easy living the way I do. I have to be careful all the time. But I'm pretty good at it. I think as I get older, I get better. I haven't been caught yet. Martin, another kind of terror. You see, people don't understand what's wrong. They think that I'm a monster. They think I'm a vampire. don't realize that those things I see in the movies are not real. I don't have a whole lot of women. It's nice to watch them. I watch them a lot all the time. I have to, to be sure that nothing goes wrong. I follow them. I plan. I'm very careful. I have needles now. I can use them. I can put them to sleep. And it doesn't hurt. Martin, another kind of terror. I would like to be like everyone else. I have to do things that I don't necessarily like to do. But I want to stay alive. I do need blood. of Night of the Living Dead. Nosferatu, Dracula, Nightwalkers, or Vampires. No matter the verbiage, these creatures have been a major part of horror cinema. The argument could even be made that it is what brought horror to film. Many horror artists have put their own spin on the blood-sucking lore. That includes The Man of Honor for Classic Film Reviews, the month of September, George A. Romero. Released in 1977, Martin follows the titular young man. This is the debut role of frequent Romero contributor John Amplis who believes himself to be a vampire due to his thirst for blood and an old, outdated family myth. This causes him to travel to stay with his cousin, who does believe him to be an old-world vampire. Complicating the situation is when Martin falls for a lonely housewife in the small town. When one looks at the career of Romero, you can find many amazing works. A common question of filmmakers is what is their favorite film or their favorite work? For Romero, he has said many times, it is this film. Our first brief clip is Romero explaining why and how this film began is much longer than than the 90 minutes that was brought to the screen. And then we will hear from horror film effects king Tom Savini. This was his first collaboration with Romero of many more he would do. And also, this was his first time doing more than just basic makeup. He did the effects in the film, he was a stuntman, and he also had his first theatrical role. It's still uh, my favorite of my movies. Uh, you know, I think the, the the cast and crew, I think, numbered, I don't know, 15 in total. Everybody just put out 120%. And we just had a great time. It was a 
originally a lot longer. I, I overwrote it. I had a lot more narration. And, you know, it was back in the cutting room that we decided, well, we don't need this, we don't need that. But it still, I think, is very, very close to what my original idea was, you know, what was originally on the page. And now, Tom Savine. I was in college. I heard that George was doing another movie, a vampire movie. I went down to audition for the vampire. I wanted to be Martin the Vampire. I went down there and it was already cast, John Amplis, of course. But I had my portfolio, so I remember following George around, flipping pages. He was so busy. I was following him around, flipping pages to my portfolio. Yeah, 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 yeah. we'll use you. You do makeup effects. And Martin is the first film I've ever done for George. And it was the first time that I had to think of makeup. See, before Martin, makeup was putting makeup on us for characters, for age. It was the first time I thought of makeup as special makeup effects, special effects involving makeup. This is before the splatter craze, you know, after Dawn of the Dead and Friday the 13th, where all the movies sort of became the same. Tom and I had met years before when we were the first film that we were going to try to make. We needed two young people. And so we went around and looked at high school plays. And I met Tom. He was in a high school play. That movie never happened. And then Tom went off into his own world and uh, came back having done a couple of things and came to visit one day and said, hey, I'm doing effects now and I'd like to do some acting. It was the beginning of something that, that just stood fast for the whole, all the rest of the movies. I was doing the makeup effects on Martin, but he cast me in a role. I wound up doing stunts as well. <laughs> He had his typical enthusiasm, and you know, I said, "Great, man! You're just in time. We got this project going." And it was the first time that we got to work together. The main darkly comedic elements of this film is that of Martin and his Lithuanian old world cousin, Tata Kuda. Kuda will only refer to Martin as Nosferatu. When Martin first comes into the home of Kuda. They have a confrontation. When Kuda tells him the rules that Martin must abide, lost in this being audio is the religious imagery that surrounds Kuda. There is garlic on his door to protect him from Martin, and a cross within arm's reach in many areas of his room. This aspect of dark comedy is one of the major ways this film defies being a specific genre. Pangri! You may come and go, but you will not take people from this city. If I hear of it a single time, I will destroy you without salvation. You may not enter my room. When I wish to speak with you, I will. My granddaughter stays with me. You will not enter her room. I have told her not to speak with you, but she will. You will not answer. Tomorrow you may rest. Next day you work in my shop. I have been told uh, you are imbecile. Can you speak? Speak so I can hear your voice. Speak, Nosferatu. Malorum redex fomes vitiorium quid stas et resistas. You are in my room, Nostrato. You are not in my room. You will not take family blood. There isn't any magic. There isn't any magic. It's just a sickness. Nostrato. I am your cousin. I am your cousin Martin. You see? You see? You see? You see? It isn't magic. Even I know that. It isn't magic. 
throughout this month-long analysis of Romero's work, we have found that most of his films have an underlying or in-your-face social commentary. One would think, in a film like this, it would be hard to add one. However, that is a part of Romero's genius. Even in a genre-bending film like this, he is still able to put in that commentary. The commentary of this film is old world beliefs and traditions versus new world ideas. That is evident in the scenes of Kuda and his family. In our last clip, we hear an argument between him and his granddaughter Christine. He goes to old family lore to explain his belief in Martin being a vampire, and even defends it. Then we hear Christine take the modern approach to Martin's issues, that he simply needs psychiatric help. It's crazy. I can't believe this is happening. It, it's a nightmare for you and him. Your father was not from our part of the world. Your mother knew. She believed. If she did, then thank God I was too little to know her. Martin had his father until he was 32. Grandfather, he is just a boy. Look in the book, Christina. We have the books of the family. Did you ever look? Of course, the books. The books will show it. Those damn books, they should be burned. That's where you get your horrible ideas. Ask the boy himself. Ask Martin. He will tell you. He's unbalanced. He's mad. And you and those books have driven him to it. He is Nosferatu. He was born to Alina Bulvesa and Rudy Matthias in the old country in 1892. He is young for Nosferatu. There have been nine such accursed in the family. There are three still alive. Martin is one. Caldo Maldoli is the eldest in the family now. From the old country, he sends the letters telling who will take the Pombri into their house. We obey. First, for the family shame. And again, because to defy the evil ones is to bring a curse upon oneself. I will not shame the family, but the devil. The devil can take my soul. I would have destroyed the children the moment they showed the signs. And then the Buddha took her own life instead. Now, Martin comes to me. People cannot come to other people's beliefs. It's hard for you, I know. It's hard for anyone young. Do you believe that God's whole world runs by the laws of the few sciences we have been able to discover? Oh, no, Christina, there is more. But people are satisfied. They know so much, they think they know all. And that makes it easy for Nosferatu. That makes it easy for all the devils. I will say, this review was not an easy one. Reason being is this film doesn't really have a genre, a major following, and is mostly unknown, even to Romero fans. But to those that have seen it, it truly is a memorable film. And once you do see it, it is easy to see why it is Romero's favorite film. I feel that is because it's just like Romero. It defies conventions and norms. It takes what people feel works best and throws it to the wayside and allows the creator to have their own vision. It marches to its own beat. It's comedic, gory, scary, and thought-provoking. This film serves as the perfect example of a Romero film, and what makes Romero films great. And if you are a fan of his work, or merely just being introduced, it makes for a great twist on an ages-old legend. I hope you join me this Friday when we conclude our month-long tribute to George A. Romero by looking at his first film, the groundbreaking, trend-setting, all-time great horror film classic, the original Night of the Living Dead.
for WMNH and Matt Connerton Unleashed. This has been a classic film review with Eric Pilcher.